everybody, it's Jeff Antoniak. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz, and this is more hipness. We're all looking for more hipness. So this is a great jazz improvisation exercise for all instruments. And um, what we're gonna be doing today is working with one particular altered dominant arpeggio, or we could even call it a voice. That's kind of where the hipness is coming from today. So uh, personally, I'm actually getting ready for a bunch of stuff coming up in the next couple weeks. I uh, have a big gig with a bunch of sort of brand name New York guys coming into town, so that's pretty exciting. I have Maryland Summer Jazz coming up where I'm gonna be teaching and again, playing with uh, 10 or 12 visiting faculty members, so I wanna be on top of my game for that. I've got a big recording coming up with some fantastic players. So essentially, uh, I need to have my act together and I need to keep it together. And so this is one of the things I'm working on. This has been sort of a go-to thing, a go-to sound. I like it. It's part of my personal playing. And uh, I just thought it would be a cool thing to uh, share with you guys today. It's a, it's a fantastic sound, but as always, I love conceptual ideas. I don't know that I'm ever going to come here and show you a lick. There's plenty of other places on YouTube to go and learn, like, whatever lick. That's not what I'm about. I like concepts, larger concepts that you can take and do your version of. I can take the exact same concept and do my version of it, and we come out sounding different. To me, that's what jazz is about, and that's good teaching that I give you some seeds and you go plant them and grow kind of your own version of things, right? All right. Well, I want to uh, thank Gonzalez Reeds for sponsoring these videos. I use them and play them and have for years and I'm just delighted that they're involved with uh, what we're doing here. And please subscribe to these YouTube videos. We have a new video every week. This is about the 50th one that we've done. I can't believe it. And uh, so please subscribe. There's great stuff coming up and there's some very, very exciting stuff coming up uh, just down the road that I want to make sure you're aware of. If you've seen any of the past 50 videos in this series, you've definitely heard me talk about how important community is to me. Um, I work a lot with adult amateur musicians in my teaching and in my business. And what I've been doing is training jazz professionals like myself, like players and teachers all across the United States to start working with adult amateurs. There are so many adult amateurs out there, like maybe you or the dude in the next house over. Adult amateurs, folks playing on the side who don't have a place to play, don't have an organized place to play. And so I've been doing this work for years, and so I've been training jazz pros in other cities. We have somebody up and running in New York City, in Bethesda, Maryland, in Sarasota, Florida, in Philadelphia. We're getting started with somebody in Portland, Oregon, in California. I'm talking to a guy in New Orleans, on and on. So uh, jazz uh, fanatics like you guys, who don't have a place to play. That's coming down the pike. So please be in contact with me if uh, there's, you know, tell me what city you're in and let me know if this is something that would be of interest to you. You can always get me at diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com, diggingdeeperjazz gmail.com. And if you're a jazz pro that is looking to bump up your business or wondering what's next, this could be a very cool thing for you. So please drop me a line as well. Okay, let's get going with, uh, with our hipness here. This is self-proclaimed, but uh, I'm going for it. I'm calling it hip. Okay, so now, ah, see, here's, here's a reason why it's hip. I learned this from Pat LaBarbera. You guys know who Pat LaBarbera is? One of the unsung heroes of the tenor saxophone. A master player, master teacher. And this is going back about 100,000 years ago when I took a lesson with him in my first year of college. And uh, yeah, that's the one and only time I dealt with him. But I remember to this day what we talked about, altered arpeggios. So um, I'm going to put this uh, up on the screen right now for you. And all we're going to be doing is playing a dominant arpeggio. So here's a dominant seven arpeggio, one, three, five, flat seven. <laughs> but I'm gonna alter it. And for today, I'm gonna to alter it in just one way. Instead of a natural five, I'm gonna play a flat five. So my arpeggio now is one, three, flat five, flat seven. So it's just a dominant arpeggio, but it has that alteration. If you wanna think of it as one, three, sharp 11, flat seven, same notes. I actually very often call it a sharp four or a sharp 11, but in the context of an arpeggio, it makes sense to call it a fifth, right? So here's what that sounds like on the saxophone. So there was B flat concert, my key of C, 
and I play B flat D E natural or F flat in the key of uh, B flat, right? B flat D F flat A flat. That's the sound. That is the sound. So that's what we're going to work with. So the sheet on the screen again. Um, here's one thing I would love for you to do is practice this around the circle of fourths. I have it printed out here around the circle of fourths and also moving in minor thirds, uh, just sort of another interesting root motion. But the idea of practicing this arpeggio, getting the sound in your ears, um, getting it in your brain, what a flat five is in these various keys, getting it under your fingers. Let me play through it. There was one unhip note there. I played one wrong note. But uh, you can ask for your money back if you want. Everything you paid for this video, you can have it back. Okay, so that is the sound. And it's kind of that simple. It's a, it's a very, very cool sound. So get it on this around the circle of fourths, chromatically. Uh, you see it at the bottom of the page on minor in minor thirds there. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a tune called Yesterdays. This is one of the songs that we're doing at Maryland Summer Jazz, one of the 25 things I'm preparing for coming up here. Uh, this tune, Yesterdays. Great minor, D minor song. Um, and here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to play through the form one time, and every measure that has a dominant chord in it, I'm going to play this arpeggio so you can hear what it sounds like. There's only one altered note. It's just the flat five, right? Three of the four notes I'm playing, one, three, and flat seven, are just dominant chord tones. Couldn't be simpler. There's only one out of these four notes that uh, is at all different or challenging, but it's really fascinating how it absolutely changes the vibe of the tune. So let me just play through this so you can tell what we're uh, talking about here. So I'm going to improvise, for instance, on the first measure where uh, there's no dominant chord. So over D minor, I'm going to improvise. In the second measure where we say an A A7, I'm just going to play that arpeggio. Okay, so that's what you're going to hear. So th there was a little bit of improvising, but in any of the measures that had a dominant chord, I actually ignored the two chord, the preceding chord, the chord, uh, the first chord in some of those two chord measures. I would just ignore that and play dominant right over it. It works, it works fine, and for the purposes of what we're doing here, it's the easiest thing to do. So that sound, it's pretty hip, right? I would say so. So let me... Um, let me play through one more time, and this time what I'm going to do is improvise. I, I'm going to play through the tune in the same places in the dominant chords. Instead of playing the arpeggio, I'm just going to improvise with those four notes. I'm only allowing myself those four notes, but I'm going to now play them not necessarily in an arpeggio order, but any, any, uh, any of the measures with a dominant seven chord, I'm only playing one, three, flat five, or flat seven. Maybe I will at one 
extra note slide in there, but I think I did pretty good. Um, so that really adds, I'm calling it hipness, to what's going on, right? Those dominant chords. And it was always that one sound. So here's the thing, that ain't gonna be my solo on the concert or on the album because I was, every time Dominant would come along, I'd paint it with that same brush, that same color. So that was a little bit much. But wow, if you took even half of those away, if I treated half of the dominant chords with that sound, I think it would work pretty well. And now here's the thing. Um, that sound we could call Lydian, right? Or that sharp four or the flat five. You probably practiced those scales. You've certainly heard of them, Lydian scales, Lydian dominant scales. That sound is included in many other scales, the half whole diminished scale, the altered scale, the whole tone scale, and on and on. Um, if you checked out some of the other videos I've done, you know that I have a bit of a hatred for scales when we're improvising. Um, I practice scales all the time. But here's the thing, in my experience, when I was a younger, I was gonna say younger player, just younger, a lot younger, learning this stuff, um, I would practice all those scales, I had them under my fingers and I could play them at like 500 or whatever. But for whatever reason, they did, it didn't sink into my ear. I could play the scale, but I couldn't improvise with it. There was a disconnect for me. So when I did something like this, when I really focused, let's call it digging deeper, when I dug a little deeper and didn't play the whole scale, when I really got used to the sound, when I played that note a thousand times, or however long it took to get through my thick skull, what that note sounded like, where it wanted to resolve to in the next measure, then it helped. So some of you are able to sort of play a scale and all of a sudden now it's there for you to use and it sounds fantastic. That wasn't my experience. That was not the experience of many, most of my students. So this scales are great, we should practice them, but as far as using them for improvising, it's not the best path for a lot of people. I know it wasn't for me. I know it's not for many, many, many of my students. If it is for you, I'm sorry I've offended your delicate sensibilities. Um, so this is great, right? It's really getting this sound in our ear. So I hope this is helpful. Now, there are many, many, many other altered arpeggios we could do. We could do sharp fives. We could do uh, flat nines. We could do sharp nines. We could do sharp five. You know, any voicing you can imagine. This is actually sort of coming from piano, right? But this one voicing. I've dug into this voicing for years. I have practiced this for hundreds and hundreds of hours and used it a lot. And I've found all kinds of incredibly hip cool things about it. So that's, of course, the whole point of the Digging Deeper series is to not practice so many different things, but to focus, 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 right? So this is something that I would love for you to take a week or two and every dominant chord you see in any song, use this sound. It's gonna sound incredibly overdone, but that's actually what practice is, right? We overdo something. That's how little kids learn so quickly. Of course, their brains are very plastic. They're able to learn things quickly, but a big part of it is they don't care. A little baby will say their new word 50,000 times until their parents have like <laughs> jumped off a bridge. The baby doesn't care. They're having a good time practicing that new lick, right? Well, so that's what you need to do. And guess what? You're gonna learn it a lot quicker when you do. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that sound. I really want you to check it out. That is the sound that I'm gonna be using on these gigs and on this recording and everything else. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. It is a pretty hip sound. And thank you for tuning into these videos. I really appreciate it. If you would like a copy of, uh, of that uh, handout, I'll put it up on the screen again right now real quick. If you'd like a copy of this thing, if it's helpful for you, I'd be more than happy to send it to you. It's really just this arpeggio transposed into the 12 keys. But uh, if that's helpful for you, yes, please. I'll be happy to send it to you. Diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com. And jazz pros, you folks out there, if you are interested in doing some of this amazing work that I'm doing, um, jazzteachertraining.com. I would love to talk to you and find out a little bit about your career, what you're doing, what's keeping you busy, and how we can amp that up for you. Okay, thanks so much. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.